Welcome back. Today we're gonna to learn how to draw furniture. I think it's a great way to learn perspective. Let's get started. Man, I gotta fix that squeak. Furniture, 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 furniture. You guys like that intro? So first I'm gonna draw the furniture using um, only Game Boy colors, but don't worry, I'll do a colored version too. I'm one of the pixel artists working on Dwerve. It's a tower defense dungeon crawler RPG. Pretty dope, right? And I'll show you my technique for drawing furniture. You can now wish list Dwerve on Steam. We need this super bright green background to make it transparent in GB Studio, which means we only have three colors to work with. That's gonna be rough. But if your furniture was part of the background and you couldn't move it around, you'd get an extra color. All right, so first let me start by showing you how to do perspective. I'm just gonna draw a basic square here. And then I'm going to fill it. We only have two colors to fill with, so whatever, I'll use this one. Now this square right now has no perspective whatsoever. If you remember in my previous video, I said that I like to make the bottom part that touches the floor not have a line on it. This still doesn't really look like it has any perspective, so we need lighting from the top. Just pick uh, uh, the brighter color and put that on top. Some people might like to put a line here. Personally, I don't. It depends on what we're drawing, but I like to keep the black outlines only on the outside and also don't like to have them on the bottom. So you can see this would be one style, but you know what? You're in my dojo, so you're gonna learn my style. <laughs> my style removes this line and it removes this line. We're gonna keep the black outlines on the outside and none on the bottom. All right, so let's make this bland square into a bed. First, I'm gonna lower it. Beds aren't that high. Then I think we want to add legs. So if we just drag a black line here, it looks like it now has legs. You see that little trick? And um, this kind of looks like a shadow under the bed. I'd love to make this bed a little bit longer, but in GB Studio, sprites that you inter interact with, they have to be 16 by 16. So for the sake of that, we'll make it fit in here. I'll do a colored version that doesn't follow those rules. Don't worry. So I think we want a pillow here, but, the, but drawing a pillow with, um, with black is kind of too harsh. So I think we can use the dark green, which is more like shading in this case. And now it looks like the bed has a pillow. You could stop here and we could just call it a day. This, this looks fine for a bed, but I, I think if we do this, it kind of looks like it has a headboard on the back. And personally, I like this one a little bit more. It's a nice touch. All right, so now I'll show you how to do basically the same thing, but with color. There's a few more things you can do. Okay, so let's pretend this is a block of wood. Obviously you have the lighter color on the top, and the darker color on the side. But there's two more sweet little tricks you can do to make this look a little bit juicier. And that is get a color that's even brighter than the one on top, desaturate it, and drag it across the crease. It's a highlight. It's a highlight and it looks pretty sweet. All right, and now this next one is pretty advanced, but I'm sure you've seen it before. And that is not to keep the black outline the same color all around. Whatever the in inner color is, get a dark version of that color and right where the crease is, that's where you want to start putting the lighter version around. I don't know if you can see that. I'm going to overdo it for the sake of showing you, but um, there, there you go. You see how the side is black, but the top isn't. And this kind of gives it the look like there's light shining on top of it. It's a nice little trick and it's pretty advanced, but if you get the hang of it, it's gonna give your art that little extra dimension. All right, now let's turn this into a bed. So obviously the top isn't gonna be brown. We need some kind of bed cover. I'm just gonna do red, it doesn't matter, right? <clears throat> you can do whatever color you want. And I think the bed cover needs to come uh, come down. Oops, it needs to come down a little bit. So, um, and we need to make the bed not so tall. So I'm gonna move. I'm gonna move that lower. Make sure you move all these lower. And then we take a brighter version of this. So let's take this bright pink and we'll put the bright pink here. I'm gonna desaturate it a little bit. There we go, that'll be the crease. And then at the bottom, I still wanna have that, um, the legs. So I'm gonna put that line there. All right, so not, uh, nice, now we have a bed topper. And let's add the pillow. Um, I'm gonna make the pillow pink a purple or something, I don't know, whatever. And let's put the pillow right there. This time we don't really need the shade around it like we did up here because we can use the color to differentiate. 
and let me add that headboard back. So if I add that headboard back, keeping this brown would be incorrect because remember, only the things facing up are brown. That would be only the top part of the headboard. So what you would actually want to do is this right here. I don't know if that makes sense to you. Hopefully it does. If you understand why I put black here, you're on the right track to understanding form. Also things that are taller, usually you make whatever's higher up brighter. If you, um, so if I made this a light brown, it gives it, it gives it even more perspective because it looks like it's closer to the light. I don't know if that makes sense. Hopefully it does. And I think that I will make the pillow um, white or yeah, let's make this white. Um, just because um, color is language. And if I made the pillow white, that's what you expect pillows to be. So it makes it easier to understand what it is that this drawing is. And then maybe for it to look more like there's a, a, a blanket on the bed, if I choose a darker version of this and put it near the edges of the pillow, it does kind of look like there's um, two blankets here. One that, you know, uh, uh, one that is the mattress topper and one that is the um, blanket. So after you draw something like this, always look at it and think about where you maybe forgot to do some shading. So for example, the pillow right here, if we just add a gray, a, a, a gray line here, that's a little too harsh. If we just add a gray line here, it makes it look like the pillow um, kind of has, you know, a little bit of form. We could even over exaggerate that and do something like this. And now the pillow looks like it's, it, it, it's a giant fluff ball thing. I'll, I'll just leave it at this, maybe something like that. I mean, yeah, I think, I think that looks kind of funny. And I didn't shade the blanket. So the, the side of it, this part should be darker. So I should pick a darker color and um, put that there because, uh, because remember this square right here, brighter color on the top, darker color on the side. So I totally forgot to shade the side of this blanket. So I, I wanna take the shading to the next level a little bit. So what you can do uh, when you're trying to shade and, and get in, in between colors like this gray right here, is you can select um, <clears throat> the dark color and then go over here to the alpha and go to about you know about halfway, which is about 50%. But after I um, place this, then I can now grab that color and I can use that color to shade. The, um, there's a, with shading, you can give things a little bit more interesting form. So also up here on the headboard, I, I'm taking the, the brown color we have right here. I'm gonna go about to about 50% and put it up here and then I drop that color. I'm gonna put this in the corners. It makes the headboard look a little bit more interesting. I'm also gonna put it on the legs. So that way the legs look like they're a little bit, you know, under the bed, not totally on the edge. Maybe even on this bed, go a little bit darker and on the edges, if you put these lines, it makes it look like it has a little bit more form. And then maybe over here to give this a little bit of shading, I'll go darker and I'll put this here and here to make it look like the headboard is casting a bit of a shadow um, down on that blanket below. And since we're doing that, I might as well make it darker here and here as well. So there's a bunch of these tiny little areas that you can add extra shading, but if you don't have an eye for it, whatever. There and there. Now, if you want to make something look shiny and reflective, you can add highlights. So for example, up here, if I um, get a much brighter brown color and I put it just right here and maybe same for this crease right there. Now we just added um, some highlights, but I don't think the blanket should be that shiny. So I'm gonna remove that and the wood doesn't need to be that shiny either. But when you do have something shiny, something metallic, that's a nice little trick to make it look more reflective. All right, so I'll draw a few more pieces of furniture using these techniques. Nothing nice. 
I'm getting, I'm getting too into this. I spent too much time on that chair. All right, I think I'm gonna stop here or else I'll just end up drawing furniture all day. But I hope that you can um, look at these and copy the technique to add more furniture into your game. These are free to download on my itch. You should totally follow me on there because um, you'll get a notification whenever I update it. Like for example, today I'm gonna be updating that sprite sheet. The sprites are free and you can use them in your games for free. If you open up the A sprite file, you can press control quote to pull up the grid. Then in the top right corner, actually it might be in a different spot, but basically you need to select the rectangular marquee tool. So for example, I'm going to um, select this table and then go to Sprite, Crop, File, Save As, and then just go ahead and save it into the Sprites folder of your um, GB Studio project. I already did, there it is. Oh, and uh, make sure it's uh, a PNG file. After that, you can just press Control Z and go ahead and choose another piece of furniture. Just a reminder, if you're gonna take pixel art seriously, you should probably create Pinterest, Pinterest boards for different references like pixel art characters, game UI, etc. You can just follow me. I keep um, updating these um, consistently. You should follow pixel artists on Twitter too, like, uh, like me. That way when you're scrolling through your feed, it's a bunch of motivational stuff that makes you wanna work harder instead of a bunch of bullshit. I made a GB Studio tutorial about how to move furniture around. You should check that out. And uh, see you next week. Definitely.